Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So I'm going to show a network demand example. This is where you can build a network effect directly into a uh, demand curve in a way that's going to give us uh, it's going to give us a quadratic demand curve. And so there's a couple different ways you can model a network effect. Sometimes we might model this by having the expected network size at the time we might use this convention. And so this is going to be the quadratic demand version of the network effect. Suppose we have 200 people. So just a simplifying assumptions, we can sort of wrap our, wrap our minds around a reasonable network size to work with here. We'll assume everybody's got a base valuation for the good, we'll call that V, and assume this is uniformly distributed between 1 and 100. So the low value person would have a valuation of 1, and then the high valuation person would have a valuation of 100. We'll say the true value is going to be whatever is individual's valuation multiplied by the network size. So if you're the first person to join, you'd multiply whatever is your valuation by 1. And so we'd assume probably that's person with high value. So the person with a valuation of 100 would join. They'd be the only one in the network. So V times N would just be 100, right? OK, so then we're going to assume we have constant average cost of 37.50 and assume we have constant marginal cost, constant average cost of 37.50. So I cross this out here. So we're going to use 37.50. OK, so here is the structure of how this question might play out. I might say something where we're interested in finding the plausible equilibria. And here what we are trying to do is we're trying to find the reasonable network size. So I say prior to introducing the network, what possible equilibria are there? That's essentially just finding this quadratic and then finding the zeros of the quadratic, finding the possible network sizes. And then the second and third part is where we use some economic analysis. And so we're going to say, suppose we have 51 people recruited, what happens? Suppose we have 88 people recruited, what happens? And then I'll do a couple more uh, that I haven't actually written in here. OK, so the first thing is we've got to build our demand curve. And so what I like to do is just write out a graph that helps us wrap our minds around what the uh, with, with the individual demand for the standalone product would be, standalone service would be. And so to do this, I think, oh, what's my maximum valuation? That was 100. We're uniformly distributing values from 1 to 100. The high value person, the maximum willingness to pay, that's 100. How many people do we have? 200. So we can connect the dots, right? So we have uh, our vertical intercept was 0, 100. Our horizontal intercept, 200, 0. This is going to give rise to the following demand curve or inverse demand curve. Price is equal to 100 minus 1 half n, right? 100 and then 1 half n. OK, so here, uh, but v times n. But the product v times n is the true valuation. So the resulting demand curve will multiply, will, will we'll realize that our quadratic version of the demand, we can multiply whatever is the valuation times network size. And so act, in actuality, the demand curve we're going to work with is this one, or the inverse demand curve we're going to work with is this one. Price is equal to 100 n minus 1 half n squared. OK, uh, so the basic form for these, first recover the uh, the linear portion of the demand curve, then multiply it by n, right? And so then we have our quadratic demand. We need to find our equilibria. Well, if this is demand and 3750 was our supply curve, right? Supply, the theory of supply is the theory of marginal cost. And height of the supply curve is the marginal cost for that item. We're assuming constant marginal cost. So our height of our supply curve is going to be 3750. Well, anyway, we'll set the quadratic portion equal to, we'll set the demand portion equal to supply. And then uh, simple algebra, so we're going to move over this minus 1 half n term. We're going to move over this positive 100 term. And this is going to give us 1 half n squared minus 100n plus 3750 is equal to 0. From here, we're just going to use the quadratic formula, right? So the quadratic formula is, is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So where might you get kind of messed up here would be Maybe a lot of people forget this is multiplied 2 times a. That's actually really important. What's a here? Well, in standard form, uh, the a is going to be this coefficient on the square term, right? And then the other thing you might forget is this is the, 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 uh, the whole thing. This the whole thing is the numerator. This fraction, the ratio, involves the 2a in the denominator, and this whole thing is the numerator. So uh, you might, uh, so if you let this minus b kind of float outside of this forget to divide by the minus or by the 2a then you'd have problems and then the other thing to remember is that this is finding the zeros of the polynomial which polynomial this one right and so this is going to give us the values of n for which this equality holds 
right? That's the point of the quadratic formula here. I mean, some of these are going to be simple enough where you might be able to factor them or actually do them in your head. And so whatever, uh, whatever method you'd prefer, I, I always like writing this out because I think um, this is, uh, I, I like the way that it, it, it kicks out the, the answers for us nice and cleanly. Anyway, so, uh, well, and if, obviously if you factored it and you'd had a product of, uh, you'd have a, a product of terms, you'd easily be able to recover the, uh, the networks as well. Then you've got the sign issue. Clearly it's gotta be uh, network sizes are positive. And so, I don't know, sometimes recovering zeros from the polynomial or, or a polynomial from a factored, uh, you're actually using uh, in algebra what's called the zero product property. That works if you forget that networks have to be, have to have involve positive amounts of people, you could have problems and or if this you could do something weird where maybe uh, maybe the small network equilibrium would be infeasible actually so anyway so here's how this works we've got um, before I kind of go into all the economics of it so here is the polynomial in standard form the quadratic we are going to drop this into the quadratic formula so this is going to be negative b so positive half or positive hundred plus or minus square root of 100 squared minus 4 ac a right here is one half, uh, and then times 3750 divided by two times one half. Okay, cool. So this ultimately means that we're only going to be interested in the numerator. So that was nice of me. And so then we have 100 plus or minus square root of 2500 over one, or n is equal to 100 plus or minus 50. So our possible network sizes are 50 people and 150 people, and then of course zero. So actually, you'd want to you'd want to say n is equal to zero as well. You wouldn't want to forget the zero network. And I'm actually regretting how I drew out this picture because I wanted to show the dynamics, which I didn't do. Okay, so here is here is our uh, supply and demand model. So this is price, this is network size, and here's our constant average cost, 3750. And so our the uh, the solutions are a network size of 50 and a network size of 150 and the important dynamics let me just go through this right now is that you want to pay attention to the the where the demand curve lies relative to the supply curve in terms of determining which of these equilibria might be stable and so the thing to remember is that the demand curve is the marginal benefit curve the theory of demand is the theory of marginal benefit the theory of supply is the theory of of uh, marginal cost and um, so remember the height of the demand curve is going to give us the marginal benefit or the willingness to pay of the marginal consumer. The height of the supply curve gives us the marginal cost of the marginal or for that particular amount for that marginal seller. So anyway, you can think of the height of the supply curve as the marginal cost curve. Indeed, I told us MC is equal to 3750. You can think of the demand curve, the height of the demand curve as marginal benefit. Anytime marginal cost is higher than marginal benefit, anytime the supply curve is above the demand curve, you want to do less, right? And so you can actually draw in an arrow pointing towards zero or pointing towards the vertical axis here, actually. This, there should be an equilibria here. So this would be the zero equilibria. And why? Because the marginal cost is higher than the marginal benefit. So we'd say a network of 49 would crash down to zero, right? And then suppose we are at the network size of 50, well, going out of that network, going to like 51 people, notice that the demand curve lies above the marginal cost curve. So there's going to be an incentive for additional people to join. Why? The benefit to joining continues to exceed the cost of doing so. We'd actually expect if you got to 51 people, you'd keep people would keep adding until we got up to this equilibria. So you could think of an arrow pointing all the way into this equilibria here. In terms of what the marginal benefit versus marginal cost pressure is going to cause here. Then beyond this point, you have a situation where marginal cost exceeds marginal benefit. And so you draw another arrow pointing back into this equilibria. Why? Because you're not going to get a network size of more than 150, right? And so this would be a situation where if you put 151 people in the network, that one person is going to leave and you're going to get a network size of 150, right? This would be the small unstable equilibrium. This would be like MySpace before Facebook began. And then maybe you could think of the stable equilibrium here as Facebook currently, right? Does that mean that Facebook will always be around? Not necessarily, but you need something pretty disruptive to upset the large equilibrium, right? Okay, so here's the rest of the exercise. So suppose the initial network size is 51 people. We were able to recruit 51 people. And now we wanna figure out what's gonna happen. Is this gonna be, what's gonna ultimately happen if we get 51 people to join? 
well, cool, you got 51 people, that's bigger than 50, right? So the 51st person is going to lead us a situation where for the 52nd person, the benefit is going to exceed the cost and we're going to expect actually people are going to continue joining until we get to the network size of 150. So what's going to happen? We are presently at the small equilibria, but we are beyond it. We're going to get pushed up past a critical mass and we are going to get 150 people joining. What if our initial network size is 88? Same story, right? So we have a situation where we are between the small equilibrium and a large equilibrium and same story so we're going to we're going to get people joining so nothing uh, nothing new relative to 51 5188 from that stand from the standpoint of the network dynamics we're going to expect that we're going to go up to the large equilibrium what if initially we had 49 people well then you haven't quite reached the small equilibrium that's unstable anyway and so we're going to expect those 49 people are going to leave that'd be like google plus right so Google tried to launch a rival to Facebook, didn't quite work. And so they got people to join, but then, you know, ultimately people didn't join in large enough numbers. They never made it past the small equilibrium. Now they're shutting down. What about 151 people? Well, this is the situation where we've enrolled too many people, right? This would be like, you know, sign up great grandpa or great grandma for Facebook and they may or may not work. They may or may not uh, use it. They probably don't. And so they probably leave, right? And so, um, all right. So. Uh, and, that, and that is exactly what would happen in my family. So, uh, so not just a, not just a throwaway example. Actually, 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 real experience. So anyway, uh, this is how you do the network demand for uh, for the quadratic version. Remember, there's another way to incorporate network effects into a demand curve. You could do that with a linear demand curve by including the expected network size, and that's a that's a different analysis entirely. But I like this one because this talks about the kind of some of the dynamics we might expect. The fact that we actually have three possible equilibria, network size of zero, which I neglected to label, the small network size, which is super unstable, and then the large network size. Okay, very good.